about a fucking intro. Jesus Christ. Well, I am Grizzly McBee, obviously, and uh, I am playing. I'm uh, back at it again with another dating simulator. A couple years in the works, and this is called I Love You, Colonel Sanders. A finger licking good. Let's uh, jump into a new game here. Before you get started, tell us your name. Biscuits and chicken. Biscuits and chicken. What's it doing? Is it thinking? <laughs> you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. I already feel like this is Doki Doki. <laughs> Look around. Oh, what the, what the fuck? Wait, I'm supposed to be a chick. Are you? Yeah, look, there's fucking pearls there. There's that, <laughs> the Asian boy group. Look, there's there's Jesus Chicken. Jesus Chicken? Got like hearts on my window. I, I guess I'm supposed to be a chick. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the, the moment forever. up now, 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 your first day of culinary school, there's no time to sleep in. Laying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy of Le for Learning. I thought I was going to say Academy of Love. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? <laughs> what should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. So, you need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Let's take this shit seriously. Better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth, brushed, hair, combed, pits, still there. <laughs> Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Mmm, biscuits. Just what you need to get your blood flowing. That is a lovely biscuit. Yeah, it was. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon a magnificent university of, of cooking school. Academy for learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Miriam. Oh. Hey. Hi there, Miriam. Hi. <laughs> She's the most adorable, awkward person you've ever met. Mm -hmm. And you absolutely love her for it. Taking the big ass glasses with no earpieces. Yeah. They just stick to her face. Good morning, Big Daddy Grizz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you miss that? <laughs> Did you miss that? Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Uh, actually, I'm... Uh, because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the? What happened? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, then I ate it. I couldn't taste any, couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm not good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. She blinks too, that's cool. Does she? Yeah, watch. Oh, look at that! Not creepy. Graphics, Not like the last one. Graphics have gone up! Right? 
Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box... What? It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great, Miriam. <laughs> but the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day only seminar... I'm afraid of being late before... Or... Uh, afraid of being left behind and never catching up. We get your ass to class. A sweet girl. Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. Look at her face. The summer she got, this summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. She fucking look at her. Look at her. You should prep talk her. Or change the subject and give her some relief. What do you want to do for this? Big Daddy Grizz. Remember last month when we saw the fountain, uh, the fortune teller? And he had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. <laughs> I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And the other card featuring a handsome fellow in a red shirt? Interesting. <laughs> the fortune teller told her to keep an eye out for a handsome fellow in a red suit. Oh, God. oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. Well, it's not a suit, but it's a shirt, and it, it works. I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow that I could call my own. I think they're watching you, dude. I think this game's fucking around with it. This game's gonna break the third fucking, the fourth wall, too. Well, if she commits suicide, I'm punching your fucking Monica, monitor. Monica, Monica's gonna be like... <laughs> Well, I can tell you this shouldn't be one of those types of games. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. Good, good job. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. I thought she was going to say boobs. My boobs. Killer boobs. Can you believe I cut them myself? Yeah, they're kind of fucked up. I believe it. You can definitely believe it. Yeah. I, uh, I can't believe it. Before you can get another word in, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hand and onto the ground. Hey! Oh, there's a rival! Heart-shaped boobs. Red suit. Lesbianage. <laughs> it's... Aishley? What? Aishley? Ashley. 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 She's Your arch rival. I fucking knew it. She's totally evil. But you cannot help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Look at that. Well, look at the tits. Yep, yep. That's what does it. <gasps> Short skirt, big tits, purple hair. I'm having nightmares. <laughs> are, we, are we getting like some... Some, some, like, bat, like, memories? Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken skins. I'll show you chicken skins. Show you my dick. Purple hair, bitch. <laughs> you leave Big Daddy Grizz shine alone. Skin? Shins? No, it says shins. Oh, shins. Oh, uh -huh. not chicken skins, chicken shins. They are perfectly normal shins. She's a weirdo. Uh, you 
You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. Yeah, it is. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than ever, than everyone. I mean, it makes sense. If anyone here knows that perfect shins look like it's us, you're not going to... We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's boyfriend... Van Van the Man Man. What the fuck? Has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes. While he styles his hair, no lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, a Van Van. Jesus! Yo, rang Rang, what a douche douche. <laughs> wearing makeup and all he's wearing is like the center part of a suit like he's not wearing a shirt that's the cool thing I guess oh no it's his fucking cooking robe cooking with shirt. no shirt they take cooking seriously here. what a twat twat <laughs> you've never been sure what their arrangement is but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I do stuff with Ashley. Look at that skirt. I'll stick with Miriam. Much higher, like, much higher. You'll, you'll be able to see the... Dude, you ever seen Miriam need dough? Oh my god. I can't believe that University of Cooking School, Academy of Learning, would even allow people like you to attend as students. Fucking tools. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. <laughs> you can't even fucking cook. Shut up, bitch. Don't burn your boobs. Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. <laughs> like how to take steroids and do other dudes. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Yep. Let's go, Miriam. Oh. <sighs> See you later, losers. Creepy ass kid with a juice box. What is this? What is this? What? As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. I want to kick him. Does this guy just fart? His name's Pop. Oh, okay. Oopsie. Yeah, he farted. <laughs> I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Ugh. That should do the trick. I love you. Oh, you're fucking weird. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. Uh -oh. it's, it's small. The fuck? Hi, Pop. I'm Big Daddy Grizz. So... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nice. Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? He's kind of weird. I think it's just you. Yeah. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. Too young for you, lady. Oh, I recognize this class. What the <laughs> fuck? It's all coming back. 
Fucking Siori's gonna pop up and be like, You wanna join a you wanna join a club? You wanna join a cooking club? No! no. <laughs> you stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Um, what in the actual Is that a fucking corgi? Yeah. Huh? A scruffy looking pooch takes his seat at the podium in front of class. Adorable. His name is Sprinkles. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup? And why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sparkles, head instructor and CEO of USCAL. Please call me Professor Dog. <laughs> I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only dogs, dogs nose, is capable of picking up all the nuance of fine dining. How does he cook? He's got paws. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you, and swirl of as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Oh. What kind of bullshit magic is this? <laughs> I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then... Colonel Sanders. In all his glory. He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of his, of this new student and his remar remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <gasps> it's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harlan. Harlan Sanders? Colonel Sanders interrupts Sparkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. He's so cool. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Wait, how did he get his rank? Was he in the military? Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. And you're not entirely wrong. This over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open the window back, back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. What? Because I'm sweating apparently. Hold on just a second. No one talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with all you really, your really weird insults? Besides, when Big Daddy Grizz <coughs> sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Oh Jesus Christ! Stop shimmering. You take a moment to clean yourself up. It's a good thing you didn't forget about the deodorant this morning. Your classroom is hot, hot, hot. That was pretty interesting. Professor Dog steps to the settle. Steps in. Steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Yeah, tell him, Dog. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. 
the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. What? And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. The broomy cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. His name is Student. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a great summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? There is... You're on a fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school. With you as my teacher. Look at how he looks. Look at how he's standing. Nah. He looks like a T-Rex. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Oh, fart on your face. Let that be a lesson to you students. The tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it in here on time. Rolling halfway across town in his tiny wheels. You turn to see the students. Sprinkles is referring, is referencing, who is appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Okay. Fucking robot. This is normal. The class bursts into laughter. He fucking blinks too. What the <laughs> fuck is this? Oh, Clank, you rascal. As everyone stands in silent obedience, when he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself, and you should go fucking dig a hole. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Chicken stick. His favorite fucking chicken. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for new star student. It's because you came with chicken snack? Yep. The furry professor immediately devours snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Yeah. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room with two options remain. Big Daddy Grizz, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh shit. Gotta make a choice. Friend or dick? Well, I'm sitting next to Miriam. I'm so glad. 
to have you near me to support me through this class? Of course, you're my best friend. Aww. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality. And there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sit there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in this semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say. But now that Marion mentioned it, the Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. <laughs> as soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a pop, a quiz about me. It's incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? What the fuck? Well, I mean, look look at the times. I'd say pretty... Okay. What's next? Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Feather. Pretty easy. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? He did mention spork earlier. A spork. Because it's a spoon and a fork. Exactly. What food is best for a broken heart? Oh, shit. Camel meat? A pancake. No, fuck. Ah, oh, you fucked up. The best boy. I got a four out of five. I wonder if it was camel meat. I think it was the first one. The one said not too much salt. Not too shabby. You might just do all right, kid. You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He nods with approval. <laughs> May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. I am a cat. Time for lunch. <laughs> what? <laughs> the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? Must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Oh, Jesus. Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd... like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... Shut up. It's about lunch. Yay! But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shh! In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. But were the rumors true? Is this... Check it! Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Oh, it contains glimmer. <laughs> 
piled higher, huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crisp, golden finish. The aroma envelope.